What's up guys, I'm Brian Lovett, AKA B-Love. If you've been following the last few weeks, we've been 3D printing coronavirus COVID-19 masks for doctors and nurses out on the front lines. Now, a number of people have had difficulties printing this design that has the larger front surface area because some printers have a tough time with this front pattern. Now, one of our Slack channel users, and if you're not part of our Slack channel, jump down in the description, hit the link and join us. We've got 350 members from all over the country sharing 3D printing tips, designs, and ideas to help out. Now, in this case, John Dunphy created a new version of this mask that uses the first two millimeters of the mask are actually a solid piece. And the reason that's cool is because you can do a little trick that I'm gonna show you in Prusa Slicer to actually print transparent top and bottom layers, zero top and bottom layers, and you can show off the infill underneath. Now, once we're done printing coronavirus masks, you can use that to print some other cool stuff, like this SpaceX coaster. This is actually not a pattern of the model. The model was solid. This is actually the infill inside. And so what you do is you don't print a top layer and you don't print a bottom layer, and the infill pattern in between is what's shown. This happens to be a triangle infill, infill pattern at about 50%. If you crank down the percentage, you get bigger triangles in between. You can also change this to other patterns like honeycomb, 3D honeycomb, grid, square, anything else in between, and you can get some pretty cool effects. The other cool thing about it is 3D printers are really fast and efficient at printing infill. So it makes for higher quality prints, which is especially useful when you're printing these coronavirus masks. So let's jump into Slicer and I'm gonna show you start to finish how to get this done. Let's go. All right, so once we have Prusa Slicer fired up, we're gonna jump right in and we're gonna load up the file. Now in this case, it's an STL and it's called Mask Solid. Again, you can find that in our Slack channel and I'll drop a link to it. What you can see here is that the mask, the bottom main face of it is actually completely solid, or at least it appears to be solid. So what are we gonna to do to modify that? We're gonna right click on the object and we're going to set a height range modifier. And you can see over in here in the right hand column, it adds a range modifier. In this case, we wanna go start at height zero and we wanna stop at height two. So that'll be two millimeters. And you can see from the orange section that it's at two millimeters of height that it ends up stopping the modifier. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is right click on it and we're gonna to wanna to add two modifiers to it. So we're gonna click on infill and then we're gonna click on it again and we're gonna add layers and perimeters. So now what we're gonna do here is we're going to go to layers and perimeters and we're gonna say bottom zero layers and top zero layers. And what that's gonna do is it's not going to print this bottom shell, this bottom face, and it's not gonna print this top face, but because of the infill settings, it is going to print the infill in between. So we'll leave it at grid in 20% and we'll see what it looks like when we slice it. And there you go. You can see that it has a grid infill and it's at 20%. Now we can change that down to, let's say 10% and see what that looks like. And you see it's a much larger grid now. We can go and we can change this to triangles. You can see now it's a triangle grid. You can change the infill, let's go with 50%. And now obviously the denser you get this, the higher the infill percentage, the harder it's gonna be to breathe, but the more structurally sound it's going to be. And you can do this with all kinds of different infill patterns. You can go cubic, which gives kind of a cool look to it. You can go with, uh, let's see, we'll do honeycomb. And of course, you can go with, I don't know, let's try something crazy like Hilbert Curve. Some of these get really weird. I don't even know if this would print properly, uh, but it looks really cool. It's almost like some sort of uh, designer pattern there. So what we're gonna stick to is something like, uh, let's say triangles, and we'll go to 25%. We'll hit slice, and there you go. And you can see it's, again, it's the first two millimeters of the object. That'll be just the infill that's printing out there. And then you can see that it's got this, this nice lip on the inside that you can still snap in 
this plate here. And this plate is the one that ends up holding the filter. And because of the way this is set up now and the fact that just those first couple millimeters are printing, you'll have more surface area for this piece to actually snap in. Now from here, we're not entirely done with the model yet. The other thing we need to do is, of course, add the TPU layer. So what we'll do over here is we'll go to the layer height and we'll slide it down. And you can see it's just slicing through the model to show you the various layers. What we'll do is we'll look at this back piece. This is the, the kind of the lowest point of the model. And we'll go down until just below that, maybe down to like, say 24-ish millimeters, 24.2. And we'll click this little plus sign here. And what that's gonna do is add a layer modifier. And this is a second type of filament. And as you can see there now, you've got two different filament types. And what we can do is we'll print this out of PETG and then when it switches the filament type, we'll switch it over to TPU. Now, the cool thing is when you're using a Prusa 3D printer, for example, what's gonna happen is in the G code that's exported to the printer, it's going to print these first few lines in PETG, because that's what you're gonna have loaded into the printer. And then when it gets to this layer right there, it's going to stop the print and it's gonna, it's gonna instruct you to unload the filament and load the new filament. So in our case, we're gonna load the TPU in, and then from that point forward, it's going to print the rest of the mask in that flexible TPU. And that's how you get this kind of cool mask setup where you've got this flexible layer that seals across the face, and then you've got this hard inner layer made out of PETG that's really impervious to a lot of the contaminants and also holds up really well to sterilization and chemical treatments from cleaning. Now, I also use 95A TPU, which is a special type of TPU that's especially resistant to chemicals. And that's important here because, again, they're gonna be sterilizing and running through these three different sterilization methods in between uses, and so you want something that's gonna hold up for a longer period of time. So like I said, this isn't the only way you can use this. You can, of course, do cool stuff like this SpaceX coaster, and again, this just uses that triangular infill pattern we're doing the exact same thing. We're setting a layer modifier for the first several millimeters of the model print, and we're setting it to zero top and bottom layers and an infill of, say, 25% triangle. And that's how we get this cool look. So that's it, guys. A real quick lesson on using Prusa Slicer to make some cool things. Hopefully you learned something here. If so, hit the subscribe button. And as always, hit us up in our Slack channel. Let me know if you have any questions that I can help answer, and I'm always here to help. A lot of you are brand new to 3D printing and I know some of this stuff can be daunting and confusing, but just reach out and I'm happy to do tutorials on anything that gets you stuck and help you out along the way. And as always, find out what your local doctors and nurses need and help them out on the front lines if you can. Thanks everybody. See you next time.